Okay guys, we have a hard drive that has failed. An external hard drive. This is a, a Lacey. One of these ones here. Designed by F.A. Porsche. Lacey 500 gig drive. This is a backup drive that I've got a lot of um, important files that I backed up on. They're archived. And I, I don't keep my hard drives plugged in that I back up on. I keep them offline. I decided I needed to get some files that were on here and I went to use it and it didn't work. And if you notice, this is one of these hard drives that have got this funky power connector. You see that? And the even more funky power plug. One of these non-standard split power 5 volt, 12 volt supply. I plugged it in <clears throat> and turned it on and this is what it does. <clears throat> Oh, and I do have power because you see my little green light is on on the power supply here. So the power supply is working. Plug it in, turn it on, listen what it does. Do you hear anything? Here, listen. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but hear the clicking? That's all it does. We already know where the problem is going to be. It's going to be in this thing, right? You just know that this power supply is FUBAR. Even though the green light's on, ah, it means nothing. Okay, green light's meaning the 5 volt supply is working, but what about the 12? We know it's going to be in the power supply. I don't even need to go any further. So let's just crack this puppy open and see where the hell the problem is. Because we don't need, I know that that's where the problem is going to be. And you know what the problem is going to be, right? It's going to be, it's going to be bad capacitors. We're going to use the ESR meter to find the problem. So to open up a power supply like this, just take your side cutters and just kind of get it around the edges and just like this and just pry it. There we go. And you can crack them open just like that. So the power supply pops apart. The circuit board comes out. This is a primary side under here. This is going to be okay because we have a green light so we know that the oscillator is working. Where our problem is going to be, it's going to be on the secondary side. So here's our secondary filters over here. Now I've made sure that we're going to discharge this thing to make sure that there's no uh, voltages in here that could cause me any damage. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to zoom the camera out here. The, the main filter capacitor is going to be one of these, where is it? I can't even see it in this thing. I can see it in here, but I don't know where it ties down on the board. But uh, we really do, we really would like to short this thing out just to make sure that there is no surprise voltages on here. Ugh. Look at that. The uh, It's got kind of a, a rubberized, it's not a heat sink compound. This is like a rubber insulator and it's just gone, it's gummy. It's just coming apart. Anyway, we'll just short, we'll short some of these, these are the capacitors here. We'll short some of the leads out here just it, it, I mean, it'll discharge anyway because the oscillator was running on this when it was operating. This is like a by a like a foam pad that's just it's just deteriorated over the years just from sitting there. Okay, anyway, we're discharged on this, so I'm not too worried about that. We're gonna take our ESR meter, and again, we'll discharge any of the capacitors in the secondary side here just to make sure that they are also um, dead. And we're going to take our ESR tester, turn it on, zero it out. We zero it out by shorting the probes together and pressing the reset button. Now our meter is zeroed out. I'm trying to get this thing at an angle where you can see it. So I can measure some of these capacitors in the secondary. There's basically four of them. I'm going to start out with this one here on the edge of the board. 3.3 ohms. What do you think? Definitely it's bad. How about this one over here? 0 0.09. I think that one's probably okay. And there's another one here, and this one here is 2.4. I think there's a pretty good chance that that one is bad as well. And there's one more, and it's here. 0 0.04. Okay, so two out of the four capacitors, that one and that one, are both bad. 
if I clean some of this crud off the top of the, they, they get like kind of a bit of a glue on top of the, on top of the uh, can here. I don't even know if it's bulging or not. Uh, this one here might be a little bit bulging, but it doesn't look to be too bad. But definitely the ESRs, they're not bulging big time. You know, this, it's not screaming, I'm bad, I'm bulging. Uh, these are 1,000 microfarad at 16 volts, both of them. Let's go to the parts bin and get a couple 1,000 microfarad capacitors at 16 volts. We're going to change them and see if this thing works. The best, I, the best I've got here is 1,000 at 25 volts, but physically they're going to fit in the cabinet. We'll check these ones out again with the ESR meter to give you an idea what works here on the meter. Give you, give you an idea what a thousand microfarad of 25 volts would look like on a good capacitor. According to the chart here, 1,000 at 25 volts should be no worse than 0 0.08. So 0 0.02. These are not, are not new, by the way. I took them out of another dead power supply. 0 0.02, but they're good. So we'll grab our uh, soldering iron. Now I know I can buy these power supplies. You can buy them online for about thirty dollars, so they're not a very expensive power supply. But you know what? Why well, had to go to the hassle? Um, my neighbor ordered one online because his blew up, and the one they send him had reverse polarity. So he brought it to me, and I had to reverse the polarity internally because uh, it wouldn't power up his hard drive. So I say, why well, go through the hassle? You know, for a couple dollars in parts. You can uh, fix this thing yourself, and it's going to be just as good as buying a new one, just as reliable as buying a new one. Just heating this up here and rocking the the part back and forth a bit to get it out. It doesn't even want to come off the board. It's the problem with this um, this solder that they use, this lead-free solder, is it's, it really you got to heat it up hot to uh, do any good with it. So I'm just going to put a little bit more solder over top of it, a little bit of high lead concentration solder, so that it, it melts a little, flow, flows a little easier. And then we should be able to just to rock them back and forth a bit with the iron on it, and they should just pop right off the board. Okay. And if not, put a screwdriver under it and kind of wedge it a bit. Drive a wedge underneath it and put some heat on it and pop it because it doesn't want to come off. I think there's probably some glue on the top side that's holding this thing to another it's kind of glued to another part and that's part of the problem here we go there's some glue here so we'll just we'll just break that glue bond now maybe it'll come off a little easier there we go there's one out and the other one is uh, turned sideways. That's this one over here. I'm gonna put some heat on there. I'm gonna put some heat on the other side and work it its way out. Put a little screwdriver underneath there. There we go. That's the second one out. You got to be kind of careful when working on a power supply like this because there are some surface mounted uh, components, little resistors down here on the board that if you heat them up too close, you're going to, uh, you get too much heat in there, you're going to uh, cause them to lift. Oops. Cause them to lift off the board. So I'm going to kind of use the heat sparingly in here just to try and clear the holes off a bit. Okay. So now. We'll just put the two new, or the two replacement capacitors. They're the brown ones, right? We'll put the two replacements in on the board. 
Uh, the negative terminal is the side that's marked with the little black mark. That's the negative side there, and that's the negative side to that one. So we'll just uh, straighten the leads on these caps first. Put a little bit of heat on this one pin that's not quite open. There we go. That one's in place. And now we'll solder it in place and then go back and do the other one. So that one's in. back again same thing for the other filter this one go right in the board here line up the holes a little bit of heat on the board because sometimes the solder doesn't quite clear and they should just pop right through the board like that Put the solder on here to solder it in place. Same goes for this other side. Now this one here, the foil kind of lifted a little bit, so I kind of have to tack it down a little better. Here we go. So now the moment of truth. We'll take this unit. We'll just pop it back in its uh, in its case here for now. My wires are kind of tangled up, but we'll pop it back in its case and fit our connector in plug it in well, it didn't go boom it's a good sign green light is on plug the hard drive in and press the button There we go. Hear that sound? That's a nice sound. Hard drive is running, you can hear it. Turn it off. Hear it spinning down, turn it back on. We fixed another one. So that's uh, how you fix a switching power supply. Now I'm just going to get some glue and we're going to put a bit of glue on here so that this thing doesn't come apart. And I can go back to using my external drive and get my files off of it. We'll see you in the next video.